guys, Zuldin here, and welcome to Dead in Vinland, a survival management game mixed with some RPG and adventure elements about a Viking family trying their best to survive on a mysterious island. Backstory is, a bunch of bad guys chased us away from our home. We got on a boat, crash landed on this island. It's actually a lot more in-depth than that, but I thought I would just roll you right into the tutorial so you can experience it with me. Dead in Vinland is a turn-based game, so you can always take your time to think. Each day is divided into three phases, morning and afternoon, during which characters can perform various tasks on the camp and at night they can discuss eat drink and rest a little before the next day uh, we had some basic supplies that we start with uh, that we salvaged from the boat and things that we brought water supply we found this shelter it was actually abandoned there was some piles of dusty bones here and now I'm just kind of working through this okay the most critical resources are your fire and your water. Always keep an eye on their level. So right now we have no fire. Click on the button to access the water and fire management. Okay. Right now the fire is completely off. You can light the fire using five wood and one tinder. We only have one tinder available, which is this fire mushroom that we started with. And one of the one of my daughter found actually 15 wood here so uh once lit you need to feed it some wood when the intensity decreases be careful though without the fire the family won't hold for long and tinder is pretty scarce so i'm on a normal difficulty here as well there was a difficulty called vacation that i could have took but uh all right so light the fire okay they also can't survive without drinking non-potable water so it needs to be purified into potable water by boiling it. Uh, notice the decrease of fire intensity in the process. Uh, these will definitely require some fine-tuned management. This is early access, by the way, so... All right, very good. So it looks like we lost a little bit of fire, but gained a little bit of potable water. Hmm, all right, very cool. Now is the time to assign some tasks to your characters. There's still some supplies left in your shipwreck. Someone should take care of scavenging them. Oh, here we go. All the characters can be accessed from the sidebar. Just need to be dragged and dropped onto an activity slot in the camp. All right. So, sidebar. Okay. Now, for now, drag Mora into and drop her into the search slot so moira is i think this is moira right here um this is our sister uh so we're the main character is eric this is our daughter kyra this is a name that i rather not try to pronounce <laughs> and this is moira i believe okay and we can just drag her into there there we go great we'll see later how to execute all the assigned tasks once everyone has something to do Someone should take care of fetching some more water. Okay, so 10 uses left. Looks like uh, she's going to be scavenging then. Shipwreck. All right, so that's that's it. Okay, uh, let's click the next one. Oh, <laughs> Blodawid. That's, uh, that's my wife's name. And drop... I'm just going to call her Blod, I guess. <clears throat> and drop her into the fetch water slot. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Now we've got assign Eric to the craft slot. Okay. Choose a crafting plan. Some stations have additional options available. Ac accessible. I don't know why I can't speak today. Uh, by clicking on the station, remember to look at these, especially when a new station has been built. Click on workshop and choose crafting plan. Okay. Wood is a pretty basic resource, useful to keep the fire blazing and craft some more things. It's probably a good idea to build a lumber camp as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So it looks like it requires five wood and five rope. The workshop is currently damaged, which is indicated by the color within the hammer icon on the station's hood. Okay. Click here to have a global view of the camp's condition and be able to get to repair stations. Camp condition. 
Every station, apart from the shipwreck and the expedition camp, deteriorate a bit every night, and every time they're used being or being used by some characters. Lower conditions mean lower efficiency, so make sure to repair them frequently to keep their maximum output. All right. Uh, workshop. So do we just repair it here? How much resources does this take? Oh, stone. I see. Okay, that was the only two stone that we had, so I hope we don't need anything else from it. But its condition is excellent, so that's pretty good. Uh, last but not least, exploration. Remember, the family must just arrived on the unknown island. Who knows what they'll find? Resources, danger, perhaps even people. Uh, sign Kari to the explorer shot slot. She is by far the most rambunctious. All right. Finally, all the characters have something to do. You just need to let time flow and observe the outcome of each act. Activity. Okay, so we go to the next phase of the day. So, getting some wood here and some rope. Very nice. Fabric. That's a new resource. Raw fish is food. Good. And fish bait, so we can fish more, I'm supposing. Angelica ointment. And we got some fatigue and depression. All right. So we're using some of those supplies. Lumber camp is 66% done. Water usage. We explored the meadow. Discovered a new area. Discovered some of the beach. Or searched some of the beach. And got some fatigue. Looks like Kari just finished exploring a new area on the island. Let's have a look at what's there using the map. Click on the newly discovered area marked with the red exclamation point to open it. Every area contains exactly one thing you can interact with. Find it and click it to display the available actions. Most of these can be used to a fixed amount of time and the red ones indicate you won't be able to do any actions afterwards. Please note that performing these actions won't affect time of day, so you can do as many as you wish. You can choose to keep some for later. Wheat patch. Inspect, harvest, hunt here. We already got some fish. Let's do harvest. And uh, let's see who will perform this action. Harvesting 40 or 37. It looks as though our explorer, our daughter, Kari, can do good harvesting. Let's go ahead and select. You search to, for the best looking sprouts to bring them back to camp. You grab a fistful of wheat and carefully cut the wheat at the ground. Once you have enough, you tie the bundles into sheaves. Got more fatigue. We got four wheat. And eight seeds. Alright. Very interesting. Okay. Back to camp. Some items are usable, which means they can be used instantly on any character. Uh, those are helpful in keeping them up and running, so you should definitely remember to use them. You can access the use item pop-up via the sidebar or clicking the character directly. Okay. Use item. Uh, try using an item on a character who needs the most. Uh, or because you have a personal preference, it's up to you after all. Okay, so the Angelica ointment will remove 10 depression for us. Uh, right now, her depression is 19, so this will bring it down to 9. Yeah, pretty cool. And what does this do? Bring sickness down. Aha, I see. 10 sickness, okay. Can we just switch between? Oh, yeah, look. Moira has 19 sickness. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use one on here then. Beautiful. Sweet. In order to manage properly the family's well-being and efficiency, your most valuable access is the character sheet where you can find all the pieces of information you need about each other. You can access character sheets via the sidebar or by clicking directly on a character. So, character sheet. Every character has different strengths expressed by their skills. Skills will increase over time when being used. So, agility. 
33, 66. Oh, I got you. So it's skill-based learning. Uh, skills are grouped into four categories, each of which being negatively affected by different elements of the health and of the character. So you've got mental health, for instance, overall is negative 9%, and this affects wisdom, charisma, courage, and intelligence. I got you. Acquired skills, concentration, very cool. The health of a character is composed into five distinct parts. If any of these go all the way to 100, the character dies. Wow. So fatigue, hunger, sickness, injury, or depression. And the game is over. Wow, man. Relationship modifiers, traits, bio. Very cool. Uh, every task in the camp is associated to a skill, and a character with a higher skill will yield better results. You should now be able to plan the next phase on your own, leaving the characters to their current task or swap them around depending on their skills and needs. Use items, repair stations, etc. Once everything seems fine, just click the next button to end the phase. Gosh. Um, I don't even know. Uh, so... Our fire is still 94%. We can get more potable water by using that, right? So let's do that. So this is non-potable water stock. And I think what we should do now is make sure we are... I mean, we've already gathered for the day. So tomorrow we're probably going to have to add a little bit of water. We need to bring these stocks up. We also need wood. So what is this place exactly? They didn't say it had one thing that you could do specifically. All right. And she's already gathered. Item scavenge, 54%. Nine uses left. So we can get supplies uh, scavenging nine more times from this. Interesting. As far as crafting goes, we've already choose a crafting plan. Craft progression is 66%. Time just needs to pass for this, I think. All right, let's go ahead and go next here. Arrows, nice. He gained the skill point in crafting. Oh yes, lumber camp is done. Okay, the island is covered by beautiful forest. By finding trees is not a problem, but cutting trees and bringing them back to camp is. Enables wood cutting activity for one character. Beautiful. Okay, she's gathering more water, that's good. It's the afternoon. New area discovered. And you can fast forward this the whole time too. Okay, the sun is fading. Time for the family to make final arrangements before the night, during which they will chat, drink some water, eat a bit, and sleep. There's nothing set in stone but it's a good rule of thumb to have some food, approximately one potable water per person, and be sure to keep the fire intensity high enough so that it won't die down during their sleep. Just click the end day button when everything is taken care of. So let's go to fire resource management and add some wood to this. There we go. <clears throat> and we've got four potable water, that's one for each person. We'll go ahead and make a little bit more here. Beautiful, it worked out perfect. Awesome. Okay, we've got seven and a half potable water. Everything seems good. 
for that. Um, let's check out this new area while we have the chance. Lost shipment. Take the wood. Times one. Search for loot. Hmm. Scavenging. Let's go ahead and scavenge. Whatever the barrel contained, the sea claimed, but maybe the waves didn't scatter the contents of the barrel too far away. Search the sandbank, dig under the barrels. Nothing. You dig around the barrels looking for the contents, you can find the seashells. It's pretty bad, but all you uh, highly doubt if it will be useful. So we gained some more fatigue there. We did get some seaweed. <laughs> Trash. Oh well. Back to camp. Okay, uh, let's see. So we got, what about our food situation? Uh, let's see, food. So our food, that's the only resource that I'm not familiar with. Camp condition, map, inventory. We do have some fish. We didn't cook it or anything though. Maybe it'll tell us when we go to eat. Let's just go end of day. Okay, that's enough for today. Come everyone, it's time to grab a bite and try to sleep a little. You can start without me. I want to consolidate this shelter some more. You shouldn't overdo it, Eric. The shadows are already dancing with us. No, really. I can. I must do it. It's my fault if you... Not again, Eric. We discussed that topic. We don't have to take the blame alone for what's happening to us. But you heard, like me, honey, the men that burned our home were, were after me. They screamed, kill the bastard. I'm the bastard. It's my burden to bear alone. God dang it. Quit being so that gum depressed. Why don't they... Why did they call you that? That's the story I'd like to hear if we weren't close to dying of starvation, of course. We should make traps. The forest must be full of tiny meat on legs. <laughs> and full of big dangers. I prefer to stay here with me. That's plenty to do at the camp. Ugh, in your dreams, Mom. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Everybody's fighting. Okay, we have some axes. We have some bags. We're good to cut trees in the forest from now on. I'll let you take care of that. I don't have the muscle for it. You can help too, Mora. You must strengthen your body. You're too weak. Wow. <laughs> These conversations aren't going the best. <laughs> I'm the sister who got the mind. You got the muscle. <laughs> and I got both. And you... And... <laughs> Aha! You sure do, child. Now, we got... To, at least we got some good stuff from our daughter. Cutting trees is tiresome, but hauling them back to the camp is even more so. Anyone can help, but don't overdo it if you're too tired. You'll just end up hurting yourself. I just want to remind everyone that wood is our main resource in crafting and keeping our fire, so we shouldn't overlook keeping a steady supply of wood. Alright. Build your own camp. Dehydrated. Ugh. Every night, your characters will most likely be dehydrated. The more potable water you can give them, the more likely they will rehydrate. Staying Dehydrated means penalties and the dehydration will worsen after the next day. If they reach dehydrated 4 and are still not rehydrated, they will die. Wow. <laughs> Drag and drop their allocation, allocated ration on each of them and finally click next. Okay. So, uh, let's see here. 31. Oh, no. That's depression. Hunger. I can drop one on each of everybody here. And I should be able to drop more as well. Uh, we have 3.5. Maybe we should... Let's see. It doesn't say who's dehydrated and who's not. I mean, 
let's see, 90% chance to lower dehydration. All right, so one, they're all dehydrated one. I see what's going on now. So point 0.25 for, oh. Oh, I see, 1.25 is what I need to do here. All right, and this is 100% chance to lower. That's the magic number right there, if we can get it done every day. All right, and we still have 2.5 water, which is about what we started with in general, so that should be okay. Let's go next. So you can actually gamble with that a little bit, which is interesting. Okay, share the food. So we've got the seven fish here. Uh, they also need to split whatever edible stuff they have. Different foods have different effects. Most of the food is perishable, so it's a good part. Uh, so a good part of it will rot before the end of the night. They might be better off getting the most value out of it right now. Drag and drop the food on each of them until satisfied, and proceed to the end of the night by clicking the next button. Sickness, dang. Alright, hunger 9%, hunger 6%, hunger 8%, and hunger 9, so... We'll give... Actually, we might as well give somebody the rest of it, because some of it might rot. Um, give it to 8. Our water gatherer, Myra. <laughs> Alright, so we did get a little bit of sickness from that, too, though. Okay, so we're done. Night effects. So it took some fatigue away from everybody. It pulled out from our fire. Okay, today's weather. Sunny. Oh my god, we got weather to worry about too. Oh man, this seems like a really, really neat concept, right? I think I'm going to play some more of this, you guys. I hope y'all really liked the first episode. If you did, give me some dap on that like button and show you support. You can also check the links in the description below for all of the game's info as well as the Steam page for it. And of course, you can subscribe for more for daily videos. Thanks so much for watching, guys. As always, this is Zuljin signing off, and we'll see you next time.